After watching this video, your perspective about MOSFETs will change. You will understand why in somewhere of a circuit there is a MOSFET instead of ordinary BJT. In this video, I will tell you main and critical difference between BJTs and MOSFETs to answer this question. Why MOSFETs are superior to BJTs in some conditions. And in addition, I will clear up common misunderstanding around this subject. Please stay with me in the rest of this video. Most of beginners think that MOSFETs are something like this, but I have to say that this tiny and low current transistor is also a MOSFET. If somebody tell you MOSFETs are for high current, BJTs are for low current, it is just a bullshit. Even though in most cases MOSFETs are used for passing high current, but it is not the main difference between BJTs and MOSFETs. In some cases, you have no choice but to use a MOSFET instead of a BJT even in very low current applications. In short, the main difference between BJTs and MOSFETs is the way they are triggered. BJTs are triggered by current and MOSFETs are triggered by voltage. I believe this short answer cannot satisfy your curiosity because in the first sight, it seems ignorable difference or worthless to think about, but in fact this little difference here causes big difference in application of them. I will prove it later in this video. In order to not prolong the discussion, I will skip transistor classification and concentrate only on MOSFETs and BJTs. But before talking about main subject, it is necessary to see a schematic symbols very very briefly and understand them. This is a schematic symbol of PNP type BJT transistor and this is for NPN type BJT. Both of them got three pins, emitter, collector and base, emitter, collector and base. Arrow is always on emitter pin and direction of arrow shows BJT type. If arrow is inward, then it's a PNP type and if arrow is outward, then it's an NPN type. In the following, these are for MOSFETs. This is an N-channel MOSFET and this is a P-channel MOSFET. In the same way, MOSFETs got three pins, gate, drain and source, gate, drain and source. If arrow is inward, then it's an N-channel MOSFET, otherwise it's a P-channel one. In order to simplify the discussion even more, from now on I'm gonna talk only about NPN BJTs and N-channel MOSFETs. For an NPN BJT to turn on, you have to pass current from its base to its emitter. You ask how much current, it depends on component part number, the load and other parameters in data. But in MOSFET, it is enough to apply voltage to its gate source junction. How much voltage you ask, it depends on component part number and other parameters which is available in data. Now it is time to go to the examples. Look at this simple circuit. This is a schematic symbol of N-channel MOSFET. I will connect source pin to ground and drain pin to load and other connector of load to 24 volts and gate pin to 5 volt through a tactile switch. With information presented till now in this video, we will expect running motor when the tactile switch is pressed and stop motor when the tactile switch is released. But it is not what happened in reality because we didn't consider hidden capacitors of MOSFETs yet. There are multiple hidden capacitors around this component, but one of them is most important and critical to talk about. Capacitor on gate source junction. I already told you that MOSFETs are triggered by voltage and if there is a capacitor on gate source, after releasing the button, it should keep voltage on gate source and eventually it will keep transistor and then the motor on. Let's set up this simple circuit and test it. Look here carefully, if I press the tactile switch, positive voltage will connect to gate pin and the motor start to run. But when I release the button, it still runs. 
because the capacitor is charged and now the MOSFET remains on by the voltage on gate source capacitor. To stop the motor, I have to discharge the capacitor by connecting gate pin to source pin. We can conclude from this experiment that the current flowing to gate pin of a MOSFET after capacitor full charge is zero and this characteristic of MOSFETs make them superior to BJTs and will save us in some conditions. You may wonder why this characteristic is so important because most of sensors, microcontrollers or in general most of circuits can provide voltage easily but they can't provide current that much. If the transistor needs current to turn on, it may bother the driving circuit. Let's see another example. Suppose that you are going to switch on or off a large load through commands from microcontroller or a sensor. For example, you need to switch a load that draws 2 amperes. You can use this TIP41 power BJT transistor. According to data sheet, this transistor can switch 6 amperes and it is much more than what we need. Look here. But don't celebrate too soon because there is another problem. In order to turn this transistor on, you need to pass some current to its base pin and sensor or microcontroller must be able to provide that current on its GPIO. GPIO pins of microcontroller can provide a certain amount of current, for example, maximum of 30 milliamperes. Some sensors may provide less than 30 milliamperes or even about few microamperes. If you look better to datasheet of TIP41 transistor, there is other parameter named HFE. With a simple calculation, you can find out if you draw 2 amperes on collector pin of this transistor, you have to provide 66.6 milliamperes to its base pin. And unfortunately, microcontrollers cannot provide such a current on their GPIO and you will fail. Even though there are BJTs with high HFE like Darlington pair transistors, here is where MOSFET jump into your project like Superman and save whole project. Because MOSFETs don't need current to turn on or off, they need only voltage. This is why MOSFETs are used for switching loads with high current because switching MOSFETs on or off is almost independent to loads current. Second example is this, LDR series with a resistor. With illumination change in ambient, the voltage here in this point will change. Look here, 10 volts, 5 volts, 10 volts, 5 volts. If you use this voltage for triggering a BJT, like the circuit, it will draw current in its base and this behavior will affect the voltage of sensor here. But if you use this voltage to trigger a MOSFET like this, the voltage here will remain safe and sound. This is why MOSFETs are superior to BJTs in some situations. To summarize the topic, I have to say that MOSFETs are not so special because of their ability to pass lots of current but they are so special because they draw zero current on their gate pin after they turned on. This is the golden feature of MOSFETs. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more.